O oh Lord, without love, whatever we do is worth nothing. I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. The patient wakes up after having heart transplant surgery. The doctors were incredibly encouraged by every cut and stitch. The new heart seems to be settling in perfectly. Like always, recovery will take time, but day after day the new heart will gain strength. The patient is released from the hospital, and so the recovery begins. Day after day the new heart strengthens, and the patient also notices some other developments. Prior to the surgery, they didn't appreciate classical music. Now they can't get enough of it. Prior to surgery, they didn't like chocolate. Now they crave it constantly. Prior to surgery, they acted indifferent. And now they're acting optimistic. When describing these changes to the doctor, there seemed to be only one explanation for it. Paralleling. After a transplant recipient receives their new organ, sometimes they will literally experience a parallel history of the donor's life. So in this case, the donor loved classical music, chocolate, and had a rather bright personality. So not only did the patient undergo a physical change of the heart, but also a personal, emotional one as well. Their life moving forward will be in a totally different state because of their new heart. In this earthly life, few individuals will ever undergo a physical heart transplant, thanks be to God. And yet, in our spiritual lives, in our spiritual lives, every single one of us has already had major surgery. In our baptisms, each and every one of us has received a new heart of divine, in which the state of our new life now parallels the life of Christ. But what does that look like exactly? This is where we turn to the gospel. Today we hear Jesus make quite the observation regarding people's offering at the treasury. He notices many rich people putting in large sums of money, and then he notices a poor widow putting in two small copper coins. And he turns to the disciples and says, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. On the surface, this could be interpreted as Jesus' commentary on people's financial lives. But that's not what Jesus is pointing out. He wants the disciples to focus on how the widow operates differently. He is pointing out the state of her heart and how it's unlike anyone else's. The widow's heart is paralleling. She is making herself the offering by giving her whole self. Jesus points to the widow because her offering is not one of transaction for something to be received. Jesus points to the widow because this is the same way he will offer himself for the world. Jesus wants his followers to offer up their whole lives to the world, paralleling his love 
of each and every single one of us. It's through Christ's sacrifice on the cross, through this unconditional love given to us, it's this love that has replaced our hearts with his. By this grace, we in turn continue the giving of this sacrificial love to a hurting and broken world, to a hurting and broken people. Each and every single person has received a new heart uniquely formed through the work of Christ. And each and every single person is created uniquely, made to offer their new heart uniquely in the world in a unique way. And although we may each be different, all of our hearts are established in the same love of Christ and reflect that same love of Christ in the world. The love of Christ is a love which seeks out the least, the lost, and the lowly. The love of Christ is one that makes worthy the humanity of the rejects, the unwanted, and the dismissed. The love of Christ cannot be destroyed. It cannot be separated from us. It cannot be separated from this world. And it's this love of Christ that when we encounter any work of evil, anything that continues to fracture this earthly life, it's this love that enables us to parallel Christ anyway and oppose those evil forces regardless. It's this love that strengthens our hearts to keep bringing about God's kingdom right here, right now. There will be days when our heart replacement doesn't seem to be keeping up the pace. And so when that happens, we turn to our great physician. We turn to God to restore the rhythm that parallels that parallels Christ's love in a hurting and broken world. I don't know about you, but there are moments and there are words that I need to jumpstart my heart. And this following prayer written by the Jesuit priest, Father Pedro Arupe, does that jumping of the heart, that electric shock that I need basically every single day. Father Arupe writes, What you are in love with, what seizes your imagination, will affect everything. It will decide what will get you out of bed in the morning, what you do with your evenings, how you spend your weekends, what you read, whom you know, what breaks your heart and what amazes you with joy and gratitude. Fall in love, stay in love, and it will decide everything. May our new hearts, may the new state of our lives always be falling in love, staying in love, and may that love decide everything. I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.